if you have a dream or something you want to do, please don't ever give up on it. Go for it. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, work as hard as you can. Train as hard as you can. You can do whatever you set your mind to. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Parkour.com podcast. My name is Adam Dunlap. This is a podcast where we interview parkour pros, parkour coaches, brand owners, parkour business owners, people in the parkour world to pick their brain about their training and uh, their businesses, their branding, and most importantly, hear their stories and bring them to you. Today, we're interviewing Gemini Powell. She is a WFP. Did I pronounce that right? Right? Yeah. 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 Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, Gemini is a WFPF athlete. She's amazing. And uh, as you can see, maybe, or into it by her tank top, she was cast in Black Panther 2 Wakanda forever. So she's a rising star. I am uh, really like pleased and honored and so excited to talk to you today, Joe and I. Thank you for joining us. I am excited to be here. Well, let's just jump into it. I want to know, whew, let's just jump into the most important question. How did you get cast in Black Panther? Okay, so... I was posting a lot of my parkour videos on Instagram and they started to get a little bit viral. I think I did a souk outside and that video made its brown. And one of the coordinators from a different Marvel show saw the video and was like, Hey, you kind of look like you're good. Why don't you come and, um, what's called audition to be, to double one of the actresses for a show. So I went to the audition. I've never done stunts before completely. Then didn't end up getting it. We'll just say that. But oh, really? Okay. That, yeah. I, I ended up not getting it. She's like, you know, thanks for coming and trying. She's like, I don't think you're a right fit for this. But she saw that I might be able to be a Dora. So she actually contacted the coordinator for Black Panther. And they saw my Instagram and they're like, we think she can be a Dora. So I just happened to get casted that way. No way. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's so that freaking so exciting. Good. Yeah. What happened? Did you get a call? Did you get an email? What? I just got a message on Instagram from the coordinator. He's like, hey, would you like to be a Dora Milaje in Black Panther? And I'm thinking it's a joke. I was like, this is funny. Like, why are you <laughs> why are you joking around me right now? But it was like an actual genuine offer. Like, do you want to be a Dora? I was like, this is real. Like, yes, I'll do it. So it just happened randomly no way yeah oh my gosh that's so freaking exciting so look i i should probably say this up front i am quite jealous in in the most positive way because i'm an actor and so you know as as us actors we're always i don't know you're like how do you get cast in a role and you audition and you fail and you audition and you all fail and to hear about you getting a a role is so freaking exciting and <laughs> the story about the way that you auditioned and then they cast you for something else is so yeah. common in the acting world, right? You audition yeah. for this part and they cast you in a different part or a different show with the casting director. So, um, okay, so so you get this text, uh, you get this message on Instagram mm -hmm. and then what happens? Like you say yes and then where do things go from there? So I said yes and didn't hear from him for like a month. And I was like, oh, oh. didn't get to be back. And then it was like a week before they were about to start rehearsals and filming he was like okay you're hired let's go do it and i'm just like no it way. took a month for me i was like freaking i was like how did i like lose that opportunity and this opportunity but i guess they just had to go over make sure i was good and then it was like a week before they're like okay you're in like come do costumes come see like we gotta get the paperwork done so it was just like happened everything happened so quickly yeah, the acting world in the production film Hollywood world is so weird like that. It's this hurry up and wait thing where you like, they'll be working on a film for a year. And then when it's time to cast, it's like, we're shooting in a week. We've got to cast the person. It's really yes. weird. It's so this weird. happens all the time. It's like, well, and I, I, I was like, like, why is it like that? <laughs> like, it would make yeah. it easier for you if there was like, not have to do like right now, like this needs to happen like now. Go, go, go. It's like, there should be time so no one's rushing, but it was. Like I waited and then it was all of a sudden like costumes, paperwork, rehearsals, filming. I'm like, what is going on? So it was crazy. Now, did, did you have an agent at the time? 
I did not. Okay, so how did how did that work out then? How did the paperwork and the agent and the contracts? So I think where I once I saw Marvel and Black Panther, I just kind of said yes to it. I was like, because it's always been my dream to be in a Marvel film. So it's like the fact that I would even gain this opportunity. They just, they're like, you know, here's how much you make. Here's how much you're going to be filming for. Are you okay with shaving your head? And I was just like, yes to everything. I'm going to be in Marvel. Why? I don't really. Sure. I just, I think I was just too excited and just wanted this opportunity so bad. I just, it's kind of just like, yes to everything. Okay. So, um, so do you, have, do you have an agent now though? I am working on getting an agent. Okay, yeah. I mean, you should definitely have it. They, I'm sure yeah, an agent's I, can get you up. Once Panther wrapped up, I started taking acting classes because now I do want to do more acting things. So I've been taking mm -hmm. acting classes, and I'm actually going to do showcase later on today to try to oh. agents at agencies. Yeah. Oh, you'll get one for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, what was I going to ask you? Agents. Oh, Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is you weren't in like a very negotiable position, right? Yep. So, you know, if they decide like, oh, we want Brad Pitt for a movie, Brad Pitt's like, you know, like, let's talk about it. But yeah, he's he like, I got it was it. <laughs> I got something. But you were kind of like, you either, you probably had to accept it or not. You know, like there yeah. just wasn't like, a, well, I want more money. You're like, I don't want to shave my head. Or like, you just, to be difficult in that situation, to be a prima donna was like not, was very wise yeah. for you. I, know. I was like, like no, let me just... Thing. Yep. I even had it in my last two projects that I was on, because um, I'm a union, I'm SAG as well. In my last couple mm -hmm. projects, um, you know, they like, like present me with a contract, and I'm like, even though they're like, like good paying, I'm like, I don't, I don't have the, I can't negotiate this contract. Like, yeah. can I get more? Can I get more on the back end or something? It's like, you're just not in a position. You know, it's like I'm, it's I'm a day player or something. No. Oh, so what can you yeah. do? And I, I so then, like the, you can even negotiate the that because that Black Panther was my first ever project or anything. So I didn't even know negotiating was a thing until now I'm learning about it after Panther. Um, so I, I just didn't know I was able to do those things. But then like once I find out, like I think I was still too, I'm just too brand new to even try to negotiate anything. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounded like everything was brand new to you. Yep. The process, I mean, auditions, uh, contracts, but then what, like a year or two later, you're walking down the red carpet in a, a beautiful yellow dress. Thank That's one of the prettiest dresses I've ever seen. Thank yeah. you. I was, yeah, I, that was a whole thing. I never expected us to go to the red carpet. They told us a week before the red carpet, they're like, you guys are invited. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have like five days, get flights, hotel, find a dress. And I luckily found that dress by the grace of God somehow. Because I, I had ordered a dress yeah. online for the carpet and it looked horrible. I got it. It didn't fit me. It was too short. I was like, oh, this is terrible. So the day before I left, I found that dress. And I was just so happy. that it, It's such a pretty dress. I love it so much. Yeah. No, I mean, you looked like a movie star. You know? Hey, I felt, felt like a movie star for that video. No, for sure. Um, okay, so he, he this producer guy messages you on Instagram, says, hey, do you want to be in the movie? You're like, yeah, and then nothing for a month. Then he texts you again, Instagram, and says, hey, uh, we got a week to put it all together. So then are you, do you have a job at this time? Do you have to cancel things? Like how does your life change in the, that week and then in the filming afterwards? So I did not have a job. My mom had a stroke during a pregnancy. So she has um, Bell's palsy or facial paralysis. Oh my gosh. So I would stay home taking care of her, taking care of my little sister, raising her, helping my mom. My grandparents were both sick. So I was like going between houses, taking care of everybody. So they were paying me for that. So I guess that was kind of my job. But once I found out Panthers being filmed, I was like, oh my gosh, like, I'm not going to be able to be home to take care of everybody because I'm going to be rehearsing and filming all this time so I had to my family had to figure out how everyone could help because I was the primary caregiver and it was kind of me and my other aunt we helped out and when I, I had to move to Atlanta because I was living at home helping but when I moved it was just her by herself trying to take care of everybody and it was just so much so 
we had to hire like in-home help. Other family members had to move home to help out so I could do my own filming and not have to stress out about everything. So that was just the biggest problem. I just wanted to make sure my family was okay, but they really wanted me to have this opportunity. So I was just like, okay, I have to go do this, but still come home from time to time when I was filming to make sure everything was good and come back and help out as much as I can. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity Yeah. in the sense that, I mean, it sounds like you may be on the path to having more of these opportunities, but it's not the type of opportunity that falls in everybody's lap. And so yeah. you jumped at it. And it almost sounds like the, the universe aligned for you. You know, it's like, so other people might have had a job or they might have not been in the right mindset or something, but it sounded like things were in a position where you could take the role and feel confident in yeah. taking it. Do you think about that at all? Do you believe in like a divine power or in a plan for your life? What are your thoughts on that? I I kind of do. I I think, I, I don't know how this happened. I'm so thankful that it did, but I really think that maybe there is something planned for everybody because once COVID happened, I told myself like, I'm going to train as hard as I can in parkour so I can start competing. And then like, maybe I can get into like stunts or something because I've always wanted to do stunts, but my family just never thought it was a, a real job. So I just decided not to worry about it. But once COVID happened, I took the time. I was training parkour as hard as I can. I was watching all the movies trying to learn more about like the stunt world and everything and for it to just magically happen as I'm trying to do all this stuff and like e even moving home having to take care of family was hard but since I was home I was able to like use my backyard and practice all the time or I, I just think everything kind of aligned perfectly somehow for this opportunity to come it was so weird that it, it's all happened yeah, it kind of sounds that way, which is, I don't know, sometimes that's the coolest way. I don't know. Maybe it's not. I don't know, maybe it's better to like, to work hard and like toil for 10 years and then have something come your way. But I don't know, there's something magical about when life falls in your lap and maybe the things that life prepared you for that you didn't know life was preparing you for, those are kind of the magical moments. Yeah, I agree. Well, tell me about this. I, I, I obviously want to hear more about the film. Like, I'm super excited to hear more about your time on film. But I, let's talk a little bit about parkour first. Mm -hmm. uh, you said that when COVID hit, you decided you wanted to start training. Maybe harder to make something of yourself in that context to compete. Tell me about your parkour journey, where you started, when you started, and then tie that into COVID and then your training. And then, of course, we'll come back to Black Panther. So I was a gymnast for most of my life. My coach was extremely emotionally abusive. She would call me names. You're not supposed to call people of color. She would curse at me, yell at oh me. I'm just a child. Yeah, it was bad. It was horrible. And I dealt with it for years, for years. And I was just too afraid to say anything because like she scared the mess out of me. I don't want her to hate me even more. But eventually I, I just knew it wasn't right. And I had to tell like my family was going on and it was just a whole mess and I ended up having to quit gymnastics and I was probably going to go pro at it but I just ended up quitting because she made me hate the sport and I was just so scared to do it anymore so I was on YouTube one day and I saw a video of Jesse LaFlair doing a wall flip and I was like what is that and I go outside and I try it and I give myself a concussion it's not fun no but way I, 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 I got me up I know day one I saw the YouTube video I was like I can do this I was like I was a gymnast this is easy it was not absolutely died so but after my concussion I was like in the bed I was like I can actually probably do this so I bought a mat off Amazon I used my family's cars in their front yard and I would slip off their cars using YouTube um, tutorials to teach myself how to flip and I'm just like flipping all the time they got sick of me because I dented their cars and messed some of them up it was bad but they, they were supportive after a while. But um, so I started training every day after school. I would go flip outside. And then I found some gyms in my area and I would start training with people. 
and I would just be training all the time, trying to get better. I competed at the USA Parkour Cup in 2019. It's my first ever competition after training for like about two or three years, and I ended up winning. And so I was like, Ooh, okay, it's like maybe we're on to something. So I started training harder and harder, and then COVID hit and everything shut down. And I was so mad because I was like, oh, I'm starting to get to a place where I was really good. All the gyms shut down. So all my progression just, it stopped. And so I was trying to figure out a way like what I could do. So there's a trampoline park that I go to and they were so nice enough to just let me have the key and let me go in and train whenever I want. Yeah, because I, I was Whoa. begging. I was like, I was like, guys, like I need to get these skills. <laughs> like I, I need a safe place to practice because I practice out in my backyard. But sometimes I need to, you know, land on my neck and learn something really quick. I was like, I don't want to do that on grass outside. So they were extremely nice enough to let me still come and just have the place to myself and train as much as I wanted to. So I would start training every morning. Like as soon as I helped my family out and knew everyone was good, I would leave to go train for like an hour or two, come back, take care of my family. And I was just training all the time, getting better, started sending like really hard stuff. So I was like, like I was doing soups, swing casts, all like hard lines, everything. And I was just getting ready to apply for Red Bull Art of Motion. Cause so I was like, this is a, finally the year I was going to make it. Cause I was like, I'm getting good. I got it. And then I got the call for Black Panther and it just sidetracked everything. Cause I was like, Red Bull or Wakanda Forever. It's like, Red Bull can wait. I'm going to do this movie right quick. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Red Bull can wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can wait. I was like, yeah, I could do that another year. But I was training really, really hard to go to Red Bull um, the year I started filming. And I was like, I got the message for Black Panther. I was like, oh. but I, I was this close to like a dream of mine. But I, I just knew like, I, I can't give up on that opportunity. No, I mean, look, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever is going to be a movie that people watch for 50 years. Yeah. Right. It, it came to you to say, hey, we, Gemini, we want you in this film. Red Bull will happen again next year, you know, yeah. <laughs> and you apply that. It'll happen again. Hey, Wakanda Forever. They're not going to remake Black Panther. Or Wakanda. Maybe, in, maybe in 50 years, you know, maybe when we're old and gray, they'll be like, you know, <laughs> let's redo let's, it. Let's redo it, though, you know, with our, with, uh, I don't know, some new technology or something, you know. <laughs> wow. So you, you're saying that you started training in about 20, uh, 2016 or so, 2016, 2017. I started training about. 28, 2016, but really seriously about like 20, 2018. Like 2016, I was just like playing around, messing around, but like 2018, I was like, oh, I'm taking this seriously mm -hmm. now. Uh huh. And training for you, tell me what that looks like. When you say I'm, I'm training, what, what is a typical day of training or what's your mindset or what are you trying to learn? How are you trying to progress? Explain that to me. So usually I'll go either outside or to the gym, I always make sure I stretch like 15, 30 minutes because my body is, it won't work unless it's stretched out. But I usually, before I go, I'll watch parkour videos or I will make a list of moves that I want and I'll go and I'll watch tutorials on them, see how other people break it down. I go and try to break it down myself. Just like, like me training, I'm, I'm trying to learn as many new skills as I can, or trying to do as many lines as I can to try to get competition ready, basically. Mm. Well, it sounds like, and, and I checked out your Instagram and you know, there's like individual clips where you'd be doing a flip, right? And then there's mm -hmm. lines that you do. So do you see those as two different things or how do you view those in terms of your training approach? Big moves versus lines. I feel like I'm probably more big move oriented. I just like doing big moves i like the feeling of it but also i really focus on big moves because i want to put them in line eventually i kind of try to put them together like i i have more sessions where i'm focused on learning big moves but it's because like later on i want to be able to put them in lines and be able to like make a really crazy amazing line mm. yeah well let's let's come back then to black panther so this, this training lined up and some miracle universe plan prep, you know, luck, <laughs> luck preparation meets timing. I don't know, however, but you get this message. 
you're like, okay, I'm going to do it. And, and you go down this path, you spend a week doing costume, this type of thing. Tell me about your first day on set and then where things went from there. So my first day, it was, so most of the other doors, like there were three, two from California, one from New York, one from Canada. And then I think the other girl was somewhere in Europe. And so I was like the only one from Atlanta. So I was the first Dora to like go in to the rehearsal space to like learn because they, they had to train us before we could start filming. So our first day was training. So I'd go there and we were filming at Tyler Pierce Studios and I get to the building and it was, I, my heart's beating out of my chest. I'm absolutely terrified. I was like, I don't even know what I'm about to walk into. I go in there and I see like, the main actresses over there and I see swords over here and I just see like staff over here and I see people like just fighting. I'm like, what is going on? It was, it was like shock. I really don't remember the first day because I think I was just in so much shock. Like, I don't even know what's happening. I'm freaked out. I'm nervous. I'm terrified. Like there's people I'm seeing on the big screen, like right here trying to say hi to me. And I'm just like, I don't even know my name right now. So I don't know what's <laughs> but I, even know, like, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk to you. I'm terrified right now. But it was. That's so funny. It was the, the first day was, um, I wish I could say it was memorable, but I was so terrified. I barely remember the first day. I didn't even know how I made it down. I was just like, I was so scared that day. Wow. So you, but then you calmed down. Like, I'm sure you weren't scared by, you know, so, the end of it. Eventually, yeah, by the end of it, I'm like, hey, this is fine. Like, it took a second for me because I, I'm obsessed with Marvel. Those are probably the only movies that I watch. I, I seen each one count with the ads that I, I am obsessed. So it's the fact that, like, I get there and I see these people that I've looked up to. I just, I'm just in shock. I, I was, it's just so funny looking back on it. The whole, it, it took about, I want to say two, three months before I like calmed down. I was like, okay, I see these actors like every day now. Like I'm fine. But at, I was, I couldn't know. I didn't know my name. I didn't know what to say. I was, I was a mess. I was a complete mess. Everyone was just laughing at me. Like, I, I don't know what to do. Here. It was funny. It's so weird seeing people in person once you've seen them on the screen. Yeah, it is. It's so weird because I'm just like, at first I thought it wasn't real. Like, I feel like I'm dreaming right now. There's no way I'm actually talking to to any of these people. And they're just like trying to talk to me. It's like, I, I don't know, I just think, like, I don't even know if you're doing it. <laughs> when it's so crazy to actually like physically seeing them. And they, and they were all just so nice. And I was like, oh, this is just amazing. It was amazing. Wow. I don't get starstruck when I meet people. It's like I don't have that gene or I, for some reason, but it still feels surreal. Mm -hmm. It's weird to explain. It feels like you're dreaming sometimes when there's someone that you've seen, whether it's a football player or an actor or whoever it may be. And then they're there and you're like, what? Like, yeah. I don't know what it is. It's so weird. It's so, it's so weird. weird. I, I get starstruck very easily. And I, I if they were like, you know, try to hide us, like, I turn out, I was like, she's not going to see my face. I'm freaking out over here. <laughs> <laughs> I tried so hard, but like eventually my marble, like, cause we were filming some scenes and I was like, this is the scene they use in Infinity War. I was like, this is the scene. They're like, how many times have you seen these movies? I was like, probably a little bit. Eventually I, I just couldn't get tamed anymore. It's like, look, I just, everyone's going to know that I love Marvel, right? But they are fine with it. I just had to hold it in like the first person but after I got to know everyone. Then it's like, by the way, I'm absolutely in love with you. Wow. You just yeah, came out like, with it. That's how you I, I, I had to. I was, I was like, listen, I've been holding it in since the beginning. They said I have to like calm down. I was like, I calm down. I feel like we know we're good enough now where I'm just like, listen, I'm absolutely starstruck. <laughs> so eventually it became okay. It was just, I, I became more comfortable after a while for sure. What did they say back to you? They would laugh. They would laugh because I, I was the youngest person there. So everyone was just treating me like a little baby. They were just laughing. They're like, it's so sweet. I was like, thank you. Love it. 
they they were so nice though like they they would have conversations with you and every time we were training we were all working out together learning different fights or training how to use our staffs and everything and we would work out together so it just became like a little family honestly so it was it was just pretty cool like i'm just like i feel like i were comfortable enough to where i can say these things and not be like this weird fan of like a sesame you're like no like I actually got to know you. I really just want to know, like, you inspire me. I'm absolutely so star starstruck by you. So, yeah. So, who were you the most starstruck by? Oh, did I? Of course. And, and did you do you feel like are you friends now at all, or is it just like like do you, do you have the you know their phone number or? I I have a phone number. She wants to text me. She can. Um. No, so she's so <laughs> like she's so busy. She has such an insane schedule. But um, she, I, I watched her on The Walking Dead and Black Panther. She is absolutely amazing, and mm. I somehow got the opportunity to double her, which is even more crazy. And wow. I was like, yeah, I was not expecting it. It just they told me a week, not I, a couple of days before. They're like, by the way you're a nice stunt double and you're good. I was like, what? Like, how did I end up doing that? So it was like someone I looked up to, I get to work with her even more closely. It was, it was amazing. It was wow. Okay. And then, and then whenever you watch the movie, you know, it's like, oh, there's the deny. It's like, oh no, now that's me. Now that's the night. Now that's me. Because you know, yeah. if you're like stunting, then you got all these cuts and you, it's like, that's yeah. the back of my head. Right. Yeah. And I was, I was, I have a tiny head. Like that's my head. Like I, I see what I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> um, do you have any special memories with the Nye then, where something happened or a conversation, something that that you're comfortable sharing, that's that you hold kind of dear to you? Of like that was a, just a cool moment. I think so. I think the moment that sticks with me is um, we were doing the bridge fight, and I had to do like a dead man where she, she like runs into the spear and I'm just like thrown back. And I saw like genuine concern in her eyes for me. And she like came up to me and she's like, you know, honey, are you okay with doing this? Like, are you sure you're fine? And I just thought it was, it was just such a genuine sweet moment of like care on her side. And like, are you okay? Like making sure that I was okay. For some reason, that is like the one thing I remember the most. So she just like actually, like he's usually a stunt person pulling the actress aside. But I mean, eventually she had found out this is my first ever stunt job. So I was already completely nervous. I'm like, this is my first time doing a stunt job. I'm doubling such a major actress. So I've already been like scared out of my mind the whole time. And she was just so nice and kind to me and had such concern and care for me. I, I just appreciated it so much. I was like, oh, like this is such a sweet moment right now. And I appreciated it. Wow. Like, she sounds like a really... She sounds like a really kind she is. human being, you know, like she a is. just like authentic person. She's so she's special. She's funny, she's kind. Yeah, it was, it was a very special moment. I was like, oh, like thank you for for caring about me. I was like, I still got to do this stunt for you, but they have a thank you for wanting to make sure I was okay. And how was the stunt? I mean, did it turn out okay, or did did you did you were you bruised or anything like that, or sore the next day? I, yeah, I had to like wear a neck thing because my neck was kind of messed up for a little bit. Oh my gosh. But I look good. Look great. So that, that's it good. Great. It would look great, but I, I definitely like messed up my neck a little bit. It has to get acupuncture and a bunch of other stuff, but it was okay. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Stunting is no joke. No joke. It's not at all. And I, I just, I had no idea how hard it really was like because i'm just like it's like i'm gonna go here it's gonna be fine and then they started teaching me stuff i was like oh lord but i don't know <laughs> it was way harder than i expected but everyone was took the time out to help train and just teach me everything and i appreciate it that the reason i got her is because it was Again, first time doing stunts, and that's my first ever time doing that particular stunt. And I've never practiced falling before. And there's a way you have to fall to like make sure everything's safe. And I just didn't do it 
enough or have that in my body. So it, it's a lot. Stunting takes a lot of work and a lot of practice. So I was like, she was a great learning experience. Like, you guys have to do a lot of stuff. Did you ever dream of being a stunt woman? I did. I, About I, being in it. Go ahead. Um, I didn't want to go to college. I wanted to go to a stunt school, actually. But my family laughed at me. They're like, there's no way you are going to do stunts. That's not a real job. That's fake. So they apply to college for me because I got an accept, um, acceptance letter to UGA. And I was like, how did I get into here? They're like, oh, we applied. And I was like, what? <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I didn't even apply for this school. I was like, what What do you mean I've accepted? They're like, oh, yeah, we applied for you. So, next. <laughs> so I ended up going to, to school, but I had to drop out once my mom had her accident because no one else was there to watch her. So I was like, did I have to go to school? Anyways, but it kind of worked out for me. <laughs> But yeah, so I'm, I'm glad I finally got to do it because now they, they can see that it's a legitimate job. And they're now happy. I think everyone's just happy now. Mm -hmm. What a cool story, you know, the story of somebody who had a vision for their life and then things happen in their life. And some of them, uh, you know, by good intention, family. And then, of course, what happened to your mother, which is nobody's fault. And then it all brings you back full circle to doing what you originally had in your mind to do. Mm -hmm. I love those types of stories. Yeah, I've, I've been. Okay, so you're on, you're now, uh, you get there day one, you, there's swords or staffs or people fighting and all these stuff. How long is the whole process for you? How long, how long is training and then how long is filming? And then combined, how long was the whole experience? So, uh, so, First of all, whole experience. I was supposed to be there for three months. I stayed on for 10. 10 months? 10 months. 10 months? 10 months. No way. Yeah. They, they're like, it's going to be like three, maybe four months. And then three or four months came. I was like, whoa, what am I still doing here? Then like month seven came. I was like, huh. It's like, I'm still here. What's going on? So I was there for 10 months. But um, the first month and a half was strictly just training we would come in 8 a.m every day we would run around the studio we would run with our staffs up couldn't drop your arm we would run passing the staff to each other we would run sprint sprint passing the staff to each other it was like serious we would do line drills out in front of the studios we're doing martial arts dances staff work we're doing fight training so we would do that every single day we would do practice fights every single day. We were working out all the time. So we did that for a month and a half. It was probably the hardest thing I've ever been through. But it, it was it was crazy. But all the girls being there doing it together really helped. Because you had someone to like rely on and support. And like if you needed to cry, we're all going to hug you. We're all, okay, you're going to cry and then go back to training. So it's nice to have a support system. But after that, like... That month and a half, we were filming for like the next nine months, pretty much. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so uh, what happened was we had COVID messed us up a little bit. There was an industry strike. So we were out for like a month. And then uh, one of the actresses got hurt. So I, I, there was just a lot of stuff that happened on our project that just, it was just longer. It took a long time for us to complete filming and everything. So it is, it was crazy, but three months to 10 months, got it done. Wow. And did they pay you well? Yeah. Good. All right. I mean, sometimes the stunt people get paid more than the actors. No, not that heard. well. Not that well. Well, it depends what Jack, depends what Jack. I don't know who I am. Um, the uh, like the SAG after so like oh let's talk about this so and then you're in the union now correct the SAG after I, I I actually just paid union dues yesterday so I'm officially now SAG um because they tapped me into SAG for Panther right and then 
I had other jobs after, but they also just kind of like, I was just like, I'm SAG eligible. So they're like, hey, that's why I like, we'll do paperwork for you. But um, I'm starting to get like a little bit more jobs. And they're just like, can you just join SAG? Because it's just going to be easier. So I just paid union dues yesterday because in Georgia, I don't think it's required to be SAG. So I just put it off because I saw the initial joining fee was a lot of money. And I was like, oh, I, just, I would like to wait. So I would like to wait a little bit to make sure I'm going to actually get other work before I commit and pay that much. But I just went ahead and did it yesterday. For sure. If I could, Gemini, I want to explain for the people listening a little bit how SAG works. Mm-hmm. So, because uh, I'm in SAG as well. So I've been through this process. So um, I was a poor, poor guy who wanted to do stunts to get into film. And then I got cast in an NBC show called Grimm, but I had never been on a project before. And so um, there was a SAG project. And so they did something, this is what you said, you said they taffed you in. And there's something called Taft Heart for the audience out there. And if you're on a union project, in theory, you have to be union to work on the project. But um, there's like, you have like one or two exceptions where they can forward, it's like, ta- it's called Taft Hardly, I think. And then you sign paperwork and then you can do the project even though you're not union. But once you do something like two Taft Hardleys, then if you get another job on a union project, you have to join the union. And then union dues can be really expensive. Like starter dues, I think are like three grand in LA. Yeah. It might be more now. But for me, when I joined in, in the Oregon, in or- uh, you know, the Oregon or Northwest, whatever that geo is called, it was like 1200 bucks or something. So I actually had to join the union when I got an E, I got a, a commercial for insurance and it was union, but I had been taft hard because of Grimm. So then I was going to get paid like a thousand dollars to do the commercial, but then I had to pay $1,200 to join the union. And I was like, crud, like this isn't the same thing for good. So then a little more about the story for, again, for our audience is that I decided to do something called FICOR and FICOR is where it's a, you're a, fee paying non-member so you pay sag after dues which is not in the union and the union really looks down on it because it more or less it undermines the union because it says like i can do anything but i'm not going to stand for the union standards of the project and the thing was i was such a new actor that in a, in a market that didn't have very many union projects being in oregon i thought well let me just do ficor for a while and then i'll join the union and so that's what i did is i did ficor and then a couple years later, I had to apologize to the union and then they let me in and, and I paid all my dues and everything. So the point is, is like in LA, everybody wants to be union because all the big projects are union and they pay really well. And then if you're not in the union, they don't have the union protection. The projects don't pay well. You don't get residuals. And so everybody in theory wants to be in the union, but sometimes it can be hard to break through because either you don't get the jobs to get into the union or the dues are so high but if you do get it, then it's like, well, I'm going to actually, it's going to cost me two grand to work on this film. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, what the heck? And so that can be yeah. tricky. And it sounds like you were kind of caught in that, but then yeah. you decide, all right, it's time to join. Yeah. Cause I, cause I, I got a uh, offer for another project and they're like, wait, you're not sad. I was like, no. And they're like, we don't know if we can get you on if you're not sad. They ain't the calling you back. They're like, okay, it's not required in Georgia, but like, you know, you've been on couple of stack projects like you should you should join I was like yeah I I just it was just so much money it was I just thought it's like I just don't want to pay that and then not have work because then I just paid all this money for it to be sad that I'm not getting work but now that I kind of you know I'm getting work it's like I can probably go ahead and do it but it's expensive I'm it's a lot yeah it's an investment um, but you know, it, I think it, some of it really depends on your aspirations. So if you're just a local actor, let's say I, I'm from Portland, if you're a local actor, actor in Portland and you just kind of want to make films with your friends, then it doesn't make sense. But if you say, no, I want to be on big projects. I want to be in Marvel films. I want to be in, in this and this and this and this, like, that's my dream to do this at a high level. And it almost becomes a must. And so the question is simply, when do you pull the trigger and put your, you know, your staff in the sand and say, I'm going to stand for my value, you know, and stand for my dreams. And it sounds like you, you did that just quite commendable. Yeah, it was, it was a little rough because I am 
um after being in panther i really i've always been scared to do the acting stuff but after panther was like you know if i magically was able to get black panther i can probably actually just start doing other things i've just been too scared to do because i was terrified i was like i made it through it i didn't die somewhat so i was like i'm gonna go ahead so i've been taking acting classes as well and i've been applying for so many union and non-union things to get auditions for but now i'm just like if you're union i'm pretty sure you can only work on union projects yep so that that's where it gets hard too because i'm just like i'm getting stunt jobs for union but like getting an acting union job is a little bit harder little no there's, there's no joke there's no joke i mean when i was on Grimm, i worked with the stunt coordinator i was an actor but i worked for the stunt coordinator and he, the way I understood it is he could kind of choose people he wanted to come in for, you know, to do stunt work. He was given autonomy. And once you kind of get into the stunt, I don't know, maybe the stunt industry, I'm talking out of my butt a little bit, but this is my understanding <laughs> is, that, is that, is that he could just kind of bring people in to do the stunts. I mean, it's like stunt people are kind of more replaceable, but I think in an yeah. acting context, you know, it's like you audition and then you have to go through all these tiers. The casting director has to like you and then the producer has to like you and then the director has to like you or whatever it may be. And then your look matters. And then there's all sorts of yeah. intangibles, right? Like your personality is why you may or may not get a job as an actor yeah. because they're like, oh, I know she doesn't quite fit. We think this other actress fits. And so it's, it can be, uh, it's a different ball game, I think. Um, it's a whole different ball This overlap, but, but yeah. So now you want to do acting now. Yeah. Tell me about that, because I'm an actor. I've been in classes for like eight years. I've been on a bunch of projects. Tell me about this journey for you as a new actor, and tell me about your aspirations as an actress. Well, it's been, I think I've always wanted to do acting in stunts, but more the acting, it, it was just scary because I see them on television, and then it's like you get it in your head, like there's no way I can do that. Like that's just crazy. So I just kind of always talk myself down or like said, I'm just, not good enough to do it or anything but like once i survived panther i was like okay let me just stop like saying these bad things about myself like just go out and try it because why not so i signed up for acting classes at a um acting studio that's close to me and i've been doing it for about a year and a half and like first day i think i sat in my car and i cried i was like i'm going to just fail at this and one suck it's gonna be horrible and i go in and it was just I, I was bad. I was like in my car, like a mess. Like I'm just gonna go home. It's like, I don't want to do this. But um, I went in and I met everybody because I'm thinking everyone's gonna be judgmental, but everyone was so open and just like doing the um activities and all the classes. It's been amazing. I really enjoy it. I really like acting. I think it's fun to be somebody else for a little bit because like sometimes I just want to act like somebody else or act like a different personality. And I really, really enjoy that. So I've been going to class for like a year and I've been setting up all my like actors access and all those things, trying to now start auditioning for roles and stuff. And I've heard no a lot because honestly having a shaved head is not very easy because I've been told 50 billion times that now I'm not the right look. This is very frustrating, but um, I just like it. I really like it. I like auditioning. I like playing somebody else for a little bit. And ho hopefully today my showcase goes well and I can get an agent so I can now get help because, yeah, because yeah, now it's like, now I'm sad. It's like, I don't, now most of the things on casting sites are non union. There's not too many sad projects. So I don't know how to audition for a lot of sad projects. I'm like, I just need help yeah. in that. So it's been difficult trying to figure it out, but. It's a rough industry. It really is. Man, it'll chew you up and spit you out if you don't have the right mindset, for sure. Yeah. And like, I think maybe you touched on this, it's rejection. Yeah. And you're told no, 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 for years, for arbitrary reasons. Like, ah, uh, you're not pretty enough. Ah, uh, we don't like your hair. Yeah. Uh, or no answer at all. You know, it's like, you know, you crush, an, you crush an audition and you're like, man, that was so good. And you don't hear anything. And you're like, what do I have to do? It's like you're throwing exactly. it into the void and nothing's coming back. And you <laughs> I'm like, it's like, it's always telling you something like what is going on? And it's, it's just, it's been crazy, but I, I've had to like 
it, it's helped my confidence so much because I've had to be like, you know, so, so they didn't forget. I submitted. I'm going to forget about it. I'm not going to stress about it. I'm not going to worry about it. I know I just did the best that I can do. And if they like it, they like it. If they don't or don't like the look or maybe I, I still fit the project that they want, then that's fine. So it definitely, it's, it's chewing me up. I'm like, you're not going to spit me out. Like, we're going to keep going here. So it, it, but it's rough to figure out. It's very hard. Well, you have a great mindset and that's, I think where it starts. And I know a lot of actors who have been in the industry a long time, that don't have a mindset as good as you. They still get wrapped up in the audition. They still get wrapped up in being told no. And so that's like stage one is like good mindset. Then it's like you, you're young, you have a great look, you have Black Panther on your resume. Like it's, it seems like the doors will open for you, but you know, who's to say there's a lot of factors, but. Um, yeah. I would say believe in yourself because I think you, you're on the right path. Yeah, I'm excited. And now I, um, I remember there was one, finally, one of the auditions, they reached back out to me. They're like, we all think you like to write fit for it. We have a different look in mind, but thank you for auditioning. And I even said back, I was like, well, thank you for letting me audition. Like I had so much fun playing these characters. I'm thankful for the opportunity anyway. And they ended up like calling me back. They're like, we've never had someone just even say that. Like that was just so Whoa. nice of you to say. I was, I was like, yeah, I was like, I, to me now, I'm just like, it's not a big deal. I, I get, I, I'm seeing that it really is look audition. Like, Hey, like if, if you don't fit that role, you don't have to look the certain look that they want. No matter how good your audition is, they, they probably, unless it was like my role, really amazing, they're probably not going to go with me. So I'm just like, yeah, that's okay. I was like, I understand. You got a whole look you want. I'm fine with it. But I just think that's important not to get wrapped up in auditions or wrapped up in the no's. Because if it's meant for you, it's, it's meant for you. So no point yeah. while I got a no. Yeah, you know what I found in acting is that, and I've heard someone say something like this as well, a performance in a movie is 80% casting. And the idea is you want to choose the person that that's character, that that matches the character and then everything else flows. Like it's easy, it's easy for the actor. It shows up good on screen. And so at the end of the day, like if you match, you match. If you don't, you don't. You don't. And you know, you can be the best actor in the world. You can be Olivia. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. Olivia who she's amazing. Anyway, you could be an amazing actress. Right. And then just, uh, it doesn't matter because you just don't match the role. So yeah. Olivia Coleman. I think that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, well, here we go. Tell me about this. We got about 10 minutes left and why don't you tell me about, uh, oh, I know what happened. I got a call today from, uh, your publicist who I think that's who called me, who said that you were on another project, but you couldn't talk about it or something like that. Are you on something else? Are you in another project now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. And that's exciting. I'm really, it, it is. I'm excited. It, it's stunts again, but it, it's a, it's actually a pretty cool um, stunt thing right now. So kind of excited uh -huh. for it. Happened really randomly because they couldn't find somebody else that could shave their head. So I was like, I, I have it. I already have my head shaved. So they're like, oh, you come on then. So it's been fun. Should come out later this year. Okay. We'll definitely make sure that we hear about it so we can post about it and yeah. uh, write an article. So what did you think about shaving your head? It sounds like you were gung ho for the project. You had no trepidations, but maybe you did or, and, or how do you feel about it now? So I think when I first got the text message, I kind of glazed over it. Cause all I saw again was Marvel, Black Panther. I didn't read the stipulations because it said, you must be willing to shave all your hair. I, that part never, <laughs> never occurred in my brain. Cause I just completely forgot. So after we did all the training. They're like, okay, today's the day you guys are getting your head shaved. And I was like, wait a second, that's like a real thing. So I was, I think <laughs> I, I, I forgot. I was, I was like, wait, I was like, we can't just like ball cap me. Like we actually got to take my hair. It's, I didn't really have long hair, but I would wear braids and weave. They would always be like, I would have very long hair, long hair. And, um, walking to the trailer, I was terrified. I cried a little bit. I was like, I'm going to look like a man. <laughs> it's not going to go co well for me. But they shaved it off. And I went home and I cried. I think I cried every day for about two weeks. Because I felt like I looked horrible. 
it was the hardest thing to go through just losing all your hair because i feel like hair just as a woman is just so important and i'm just like i have none i look so weird but after a while i got used to it because then i'm like i don't have to wake up spend an hour on something when it's raining outside i'm not trying to cover my head up because there's no hair up there so i actually started to like it and then i just started to like how i look and even after the project i kept kept shaving it it would grow out and i would shave it back down then i got used to being bald and i got used to the look and now i like it i actually like having no hair and i never thought that was something i would ever say wow wow you know and not many women are put in a position where they want to or need to shave their head so yeah. it's almost like in some ways kind of a gift for you to experience it to be forced into it in a really cool way for an amazing reason and then get yeah. to find that confidence in a different look i think it helps like i used to rely so much on my looks as my hair and then like i actually had to start accepting and loving myself which i i never thought i had a problem with myself until my hair was off. I was like well, wait a second. I was like, maybe I don't love myself as much as I thought I did. So it taught me a lot about myself. Honestly, I'm I'm glad that it happened. As scary as it was, I'm actually thankful for it. And now I'm just like kind of keep it short now. Well, a lot of us men lose our hair, and then we're forced to go bald. You know. And anyway, I'll tell you this: <laughs> that some people, men and women, but I'm going to focus on women in a second. Some people look look great with the shaved head. And some people who just don't. And, uh, you know, Demi Moore in the film G.I. Jane. Like, yeah. She, she's so hot. It's crazy. It's just from a man perspective, she's so hot. And I think that your shaped head looks great on you. So, like, you. you've unlocked a superpower, which is like, I don't have to depend on my hair to be beautiful. And yeah, that, that's what I realized. I don't need hair to, like, look good or, or anything. I was like, this is great. It helps so much. And I'm just like so freeing. I really like it. When I do flips, like I don't have to care in my face anymore. It's been, yes. it's been great. It actually probably has helped my training. It's like I can actually see when I'm flipping now. Who knew? There's no hair whacking my face. Oh my gosh. I never thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> like instead yeah. of air squishing around your face, you don't have to pull it back in a ponytail or it comes out or like, you know, it gets Yeah, exactly. Your I'm like, I I, I can actually see me flipping now. Like before I couldn't see anything. And now once my hand shape, I was like, whoa, I see the ground. I was like, I can see things. So I'm all for having no hair now. What gym do you train at? I, I saw some videos of you look like Ninja Quest in Atlanta, but maybe there's a different jam or I'm wrong there. Yeah, Ninja Quest um, ended up closing down from COVID. So I go to um, Atlanta Parkour. Oh, crap. I didn't know that. I should know. I can't keep track of everything in the park world. Atlanta parkour. Oh, very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Who are the who are the coaches there or who are the who are the bigger names at that gym? Uh one of the coaches name is Mike. Why well, didn't know this last name? Thanks, Mike. And then another guy, Alex. I don't know how to say his last name, but Mike and Alex. And they're great coaches and they always help me out whenever I need to. And it's it's a fun gym to go to. They always change the setup every time. And they're always willing to spot me. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Do you? What are your goals right now in a parkour context? Do you still want to compete in Red Bull? Do you have movements you want to improve? Do you, like, what are you working on? Right now, I'm gunning for a double A twist. I just want to dub. What one double twist? Because twisting has been so hard for me. I just recently got my standing pull outside, and I want to get I, anything twisting is my goal right now. But I'm thinking if red bull is a thing this year i might try to apply for it but then also i'm starting to get work on projects now so i really don't know what i'm going to do but i i've always wanted to at least compete or just be a part of red bull so i think if red bull's happening i'm doing it because i'm kind of now in the mindset to train for it like i it wasn't a week ago and then for some reason i saw like a red bull ad or something i was like maybe i should try and get back into train competition mode but for right now i just want twisting just to sure it. okay well it does sound like they work together synergistically so if you're training as an athlete for like red bull it's going to make you better in the stunt capacity i mean it sounds yeah. like maybe the big factor is going to be time like do you have time to do it all do you have time to be on 
here and do here and do here. But I, I imagine that the door for Red Bull is not going to close for you because you're just going to keep getting better. That helps stuff. I help stuff, but it, it is hard because I, I'm, I've been rehearsing or on set like from 8 a.m. to like. 8 p.m. and then I got to go back in the next day at 8 a.m. and I'm like I have no time really right now to to train like maybe I'll try to squeeze in 30 minutes but it, it's been hard to find training time hmm no you have a full-time job no yeah yeah oh one more word of encouragement for you so I've talked to a lot of stunt people who have been you're like they're stunt people like they're not actors maybe they've done some acting classes but they're stunt people they have more speaking roles in films than all the people who are just actors. Like in Portland, I know a handful of stunt people that have that story. And apparently what these stunt people have told me is, well, yeah, we're on the roll for stunts, but then they need somebody to say something or they yeah. decide to put a line in during what I'm doing. And so I just think that everything's going to work right for you because you're in like a pretty cool place where like you're into the industry with stunts, but now you're taking acting seriously. And then mm -hmm. when you get those opportunities, I don't see why it wouldn't work for you in a positive way. Yeah. So I really hope so. It would be great. It would be really cool. Um, let's see. Why don't you end? Why don't we end this? And why don't you tell me, I don't know. Do you have anything else to say? Maybe uh, anything about your experience, about your training? And of course, you want to know how people can find you and follow you. And, uh, you know, let's go from there. Yeah. Well, I think my experience with Black Panther was absolutely amazing. I had the best time on set, being there with everybody, learning as much as I can. Um, I do just want to tell anybody who's watching, if you have a dream or something you want to do, please don't ever give up on it. Go for it. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, work as hard as you can, train as hard as you can. You can do whatever you set your mind to. And if you want to follow my journey, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm trying to learn how to use YouTube. I'm horrible at social media, but <laughs> horrible, horrible at it. I don't know how to make videos uh -oh. and stuff. Trying, but you can follow me and my journey at Gemini underscore Powell and it's Gemini with a J. Very cool, yeah. And if you're watching this on YouTube, everybody, all the links are in the description. You can click on them and follow her. Aren't you? Don't you have almost thirty thousand followers on Instagram now? Yeah, I I had like six thousand, six seven thousand, and then Panther came out, and now I'm at twenty seven thousand. So it's kind of like a that helped a lot. I was like, oh, I have followers wow. now. Look at that. Yeah, it was that crazy. It was like a map. yeah, didn't I? I posted one picture, and it's just like it helped a lot. I was like a influx of people just coming in really quick. Like, okay, and I actually should start posting now. So now we have to learn how to post and use social media. It's been very weird. <laughs> you have this story where the the universe is pulling you along, right? It's pulling yeah. you into stunts. It's pulling you into social media. It's pulling you into acting. It's like yeah. you're long you're along for this ride and it's and it's going awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. It's like excited to what the ride has next. I'm ready. Wow. Very cool. That's a great note to end on. Gemini, thank you for joining us. Do stay on for a second. I'm going to end the recording and then stay on for a second. Everybody, okay. uh, definitely follow the description below. Follow Gemini on social media and stay tuned. She's on a project she can't tell us about, <laughs> which is super exciting because that always means yeah. good things, you know. And... Uh, yeah, we just look forward. We, I, I'm sure the pub board looks forward to seeing your career and following it. So thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me.